In this video, I'm going to show you how you can click on game objects and make sure your UI doesn't interfere with that in unwanted ways. I will also show you how you can organize your UI and clickable objects through a custom click manager. Instead of having every object or panel detect clicks themselves, the click manager will be the only class to do that. That way everything will be nice and organized and you don't have to deal with panels overlapping, not closing or clicks going through panels and selecting the game objects behind them when you don't want that to happen. Button clicks will work as usual, so you can still hook up functions via the inspector or via script. This video is also going to show you a good practical use case for inheritance as well as interfaces. We will use those to make the code flexible and reusable. Let's start with the cultists as the first clickable game object. I'm going to drag in some sprites here that I created recently and set these sorting orders. Probably not the greatest art you've ever seen, it was my first attempt at pixel art and I really struggled with having so few pixels. I definitely should have used a bigger canvas and some iterations might have helped. Anyhow, feel free to use your own. If you use pixel art like I do, make sure to set the filter mode to none, otherwise the pixel art is going to look blurry. You already have a cultist game object, so let's just add a sprite renderer to that and assign the sprite. The clicks on the cultist and other game objects are going to be registered with a raycast, so they need a collider for that to work. Let's add a box collider to D to the cultist and the cabin. The cultist, or rather the cultist class, needs a way to be informed about the click. Since other classes might want to implement that as well, this is a perfect use case for an interface. Let's create a new script called iClickable replace class with interface, remove the modi behavior and add a function called click. No need to mark it public, everything in an interface is public anyway. This is all there is to it. If a class implements this interface, it must have a function called click that takes no parameters and returns void, aka nothing. Now let's add the interface to the cultist class and implement it. The fastest way is to click the interface, hit control plus period and choose implement interface. For testing, let's make the click function grow the cultist by 50%. Now that we have an interface, we can shoot away from the camera and check if we hit anything. If we do, we check if that object has a class that implements the interface iClickable. And if so, we can tell that class to call the function click. To show you how the interface can be used in another class, let's create one for our buildings. Simply call it building and implement the interface as well. When this class is having its click function called, it will rotate. Now it's time for the actual click function. Create a class called click manager and open it up. The raycast will be shot from the camera, so we need a reference to that. For good practice, we won't just use camera.main, as this could lead to mix-ups, but serialize a variable in which we store a reference to the camera. In the update function, we check for left mouse button clicks, get the position of the mouse in world space, and shoot away from that position. The direction is vector 2.0, which means it goes towards the game scene. If we hit something, we make a variable of the type iClickable interface and try to assign it the iClickable interface on the object we just hit. If that object doesn't have a class that implements the interface, it will be null. So in the last line we call the click function if it is null, that's what the question mark means. Keep in mind that we shouldn't have an object with multiple classes that implement iClickable. That would make it pretty unreliable which class we're getting. But I can't think of any case where that would make sense anyway. Let's try this out. First the click manager needs to be in the scene and get a reference to the camera. By turning the cultist and the building into prefabs we can quickly place a few of them in the scene. When I click them, the functions are called. The 
The order of what is clicked is determined by the distance to the camera, the Z position. Keep in mind that a 2D game in Unity is really a 3D game ignoring perspective. The ray starts at the camera and goes towards the center of the game world. So whatever is closest to the camera registers the click and blocks stuff behind it. Right now the cult is in front so they catch the click. If I change the Z position, the building is in front and registers the click. If you need both things to be clicked, you could use a function called RayCastAll, which returns a list and then go through that list and call the click function on everything in that list that has the interface. For this game, and I assume for most strategy games, that isn't needed. Also keep in mind that the sorting order, meaning the order in which the sprites are rendered, have nothing to do with who registers the click first. The only thing that matters is the distance to the camera. Right now the cabin is rendered in front of the cultist because they have the exact same sorting order on the same sorting layer, but the cabin is closer to the camera in its actual Z position. If I change the sorting order, the cabin is rendered behind the cultist, but the Z position, and therefore the raycast hit order, doesn't change. Ok, now that we can click and manage game objects quite nicely, it's time to bring in the UI. We can use buttons and sliders just as usual, but I think it's important to prevent a click registering on a game object when the mouse is over a new eye element. On top of that, we will make sure that when a panel opens, all other panels get closed. Let's add a static event in the click manager and assign it an empty delegate, which makes sure that we don't get an error when calling it before anything has subscribed to it. Also make sure to include the systems library to use the action keyword. Since this event can only be called from this class, an easy workaround is to make a public function that triggers this event. This too should be made static, so we can call it from anywhere in our game without having to get a reference to the game object that holds the click manager. Now every panel should subscribe to that event when it opens and listen to it. This might sound pretty similar to what we wanted with the iClickable interface, but we will use inheritance. The reason is that we want more than just making sure there is a function with the same name, we want the functions to have the same contents. Create a class called UIPanel, which will serve as the base class for every UIPanel in the game. This class has two main functions, open and closed panel. The open function triggers the close all windows event, so every other window gets closed, and then the game objects this class is attached to will be activated. The other function is closed panel, which simply disables the game object. We can call this function by hooking it up to a button, but also make sure it gets called whenever the click manager fires the close all windows event. So this class starts listening in on enable and stops listening in on disable. Keep in mind that it is very important to keep the right order in the open panel function. First we tell all other panels to close and then we set the panel active which triggers the on enable function which means the panel subscribes to it as well. If we do it the other way around, the panel subscribes to the close event first and then triggers it, killing itself in the same frame. Now we can make sure that the close all panels event gets triggered whenever the player clicks somewhere on the screen that is not a panel. This is of course up to you, but I think it makes for a nice flow and a lot of games handle it that way. On top of that, it is quite useful for the development of the game because you don't have to create a close button for every panel when testing things out. For that, the click manager can simply check if the click was over an UI element, and if it wasn't, it calls the close all panels event. Since normal raycasts don't work on the UI, we need a different method called graphic raycasting. This is simply a component you can attach to the canvas. Let's create a test panel so Unity creates a canvas for us, and as you can see, it already comes with a graphic raycaster. I set the motor screen space camera to not have to zoom in and out all the time when creating the UI. Back in the click manager script, we add a reference to the graphic raycaster and the event system which was created automatically by Unity when the canvas was created. We also need something called pointer event data which we can create with a new keyword. As an argument you can pass in null, we only need this to get the mouse position. Inside the update loop, where we check for a mouse click, we'll set the position of the event data to the mouse position and then show the raycast using the graphics raycaster. This one doesn't need a direction by the way, since it's made for the UI. The result of the raycast is stored in a list, so it's more like raycast all, meaning it goes through multiple things. 
You could iterate through it and do things like checking for components and so on, but all we care about right now is if anything was hit at all, so if we check if the counter is bigger than zero. If it is, the mouse is over a new i element and we simply return to prevent the check for game objects. You could either trigger the close all panels function right after that, or only in case neither a UI element nor a game object was clicked. Let's test this out by connecting the graphic ray caster and the event system to the click manager. Then we attach the UI panel script to the panel we created and also make it smaller than the screen. Also create a new sorting order called UI and set the panel to it. As you can see, clicking on it does nothing, that's good, and when placing it over the cabin here, it prevents the click from going through, and if I click outside the panel, it closes. Lastly, I want to show you how you can add exceptions by nesting a panel inside an invisible panel that covers the entire screen. For example, if I make a panel called Pause Panel, I first create a panel that covers the screen, but has no alpha and is therefore invisible. The graphic ray caster still works on that, but the close all windows function won't be triggered because no matter where I click, the graphic ray cast hits something. The actual panel that the player sees, as well as buttons and so on, are simply childs of this panel. Obviously, one of those buttons should trigger the close panel function or the close all windows function. That's it for now. I hope it wasn't too complex and I suggest you try it out for yourself as it makes things a lot easier in the long run. If you like this video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe and let me know if you have any questions. Goodbye.